Hello everybody, it's Sylvie, welcome back. I hope you're doing good. Uh, today's video is another tag video. This is the how do you tarot tag. Uh, the original video, I will make sure to link below, uh, was by Lady Knight of Avalon. Um, it's, I wanna say 10 questions about tarot practice and I really like the questions. I wanted to chat a little bit more about my tarot practice that's kind of the point of this channel uh, but I feel a little bit intimidated slash imposter syndrome e to start just talking about myself um so I thought I would give this tag a go I'm gonna get straight into it because I have a feeling I'm gonna talk for a really long time so let's get started so the first question is what do you like about tarot uh, and this could be a whole video in and of itself this could be a whole series of videos so I will try and keep it as uh, brief but still coherent as possible. Um, so, okay, a thing about me, and this is relevant to the question, I promise, it's a little bit of context. A uh, thing about me is I am a little bit obsessed with the way that people categorize and conceptualize pretty much anything. Uh, I am endlessly fascinated by how we attempt to quantify the human experience. Uh, so like the material facts of existence as well as the social constructs and narratives that we are all a part of. So in that vein, the thing about tarot is it's a system. I like systems. I love learning about systems because they are so informative of the ways that we try to describe and also reinforce that classification of the human experience that I was just talking about. Um, look, I'm autistic, I'm obsessed with studying how people are people and that's kind of what this comes down to. So tarot being a system with a very strict structure, like on the one hand I like having that structure to uh, read with because it's very clear-cut and when something is very strictly organised and defined I find it easier to be creative with it, uh, which sounds counterintuitive, but it, it is what it is. Uh, so I find it easier to be expansive when I'm reading and interpreting the cards. Uh, it's like that saying, um, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. I think that a rigid framework like the tarot is actually just a really strong foundation for like playing with new ideas and inspiration and like growth um so yeah <laughs> additionally because uh, there's always more um I love to hear how and like learn how different readers and different deck creators have interpreted that structure for themselves have found it relevant to their own experiences have found different connections between different cards and like reinterpreted those meanings um, and like in turn, I think all of that enriches my own understanding of the tarot system and what I can get out of it. I don't think I could ever get bored of examining and deconstructing and reconstructing the tarot system. Um, so in short, to try and sum all that up, I think the framework of the tarot and the way it has been like communally, socially constructed and reinforced is in itself fascinating. And a reason that I like the tarot, um, it offers a chance to view anything from so many different perspectives. And that's what I that's what I like about it. That's what I like about the tarot. It's this kind of multifaceted, multi-perspective tool that kind of is it's a cumulative, like additive experience. Like every time you read with it, you're adding to your own understanding and how that can impact future readings and I love that. Question two is what do you use tarot for? I will try and keep most of my answers a little bit shorter or we're really going to be here for years. Uh, so in brief, I use the tarot uh, for myself, I only read for myself um, at least at this point in time and I use it for introspection. I use it for examining my own shit basically um, you might be able to tell I love to think about things. I love to get lost in my own head um, There's no way to say that without sounding a little bit pretentious uh, But I love to just like get really involved with the things I'm thinking about and like think deeply about the things I'm thinking about uh, So I use tarot to open up those different perspectives um, So like things like shadow work or that kind of thing 
I think is really great with the tarot. I think I've said this before, but I use tarot in the same way that a lot of people journal. Uh, it's basically, I use the tarot to learn more about myself and like work stuff out. Question three, what is your go-to work horse deck? The one that you can read with no matter what. Now, I can never have a simple answer. So either I'm a Libra who can't make a decision to save my life, or I'm just too far gone with seeing tarot as this like multifaceted, multi-perspective thing. But I don't think I have a workhorse deck, at least not one that I would say is gonna be that forever. Um, so I would once have said that this, Cat Black's Golden Tarot, I would once have said that this was my workhorse deck because it was my like primary deck for a really long time. I got really comfy with it. I'll show you some cards, shall I? It's kind of a bit more interesting than just watching me wave my hands about. Um, so this was my primary deck for a really long time. I did all kinds of readings with it. I got really comfy with it and I still love it, but I haven't worked with this in ages. Um, and because of that, I feel like, cause like I haven't like maintained that relationship with this deck it no longer feels as easy or as like effortless to work with. So I wouldn't call this a workhorse deck now. Uh, this is gorgeous though, and I do need to pull it back out. But that is beside the point. I think if I'm considering like a, a seasonal workhorse deck, not seasonal as in like the seasons of the year, but more like seasons of my life or my practice, this would be my ooh, my workhorse deck of the moment. This is the Trip and Wait Tarot Borderless Edition. And I love this deck. This has just worked so well for me since I got it last year. It's worked in all kinds of different readings. Did I call this the Groovy Weight or the Trip and Wait? It is the Trip and Wait. Um, I'm clearly not paying enough attention to what I'm saying. Uh, my brain is working faster than my mouth. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is like my workhorse deck at the moment. If I'm not sure what to use, I pull this out. It works really well for different kinds of readings. It's like straightforward. It gets to the point, or at least I can get to the point with it. And I feel like I never have to search too hard to like figure out what it's saying. Like this is the kind of deck that I can pull and I can just go off like surface level meanings and it all makes sense. And I feel like I'm getting something out of the reading. In contrast, the next question is, what is your most difficult deck to work with and why? And for me, I think it's the Labanco Tarot. So this, like, don't get me wrong. I love this deck. The King of Pentacles is sitting on top because he's stalking me at the moment. Um, yeah, I love this. I love to work with this, but I think the key word is like in the question, what's the most difficult deck to work with? And I really have to work with this deck. It always takes more effort to kind of get some meaning out of the cards. It's never obvious answers with this. And yeah, it's just more difficult to talk to. There are some really loud vehicles outside right now and I'm totally losing my train of thought. Um, yeah, I don't need to harp on about this. This is gorgeous, I love it it's not easy for me to read. And maybe that's just a question of like spending more time with it, but there's just like something about it. I think it's really valuable and I really enjoy the readings that I get with this deck, but it's one that I need to like sit with. I need to have time to talk to this deck. I can't just do like a quick and easy reading with it. So that's the Labanco Tarot. <laughs> the king is back on top. Question five. Which decks do you want to study in depth but haven't got it around to yet? Uh, so the kind of easy answer would be the Thoth and the Marseille, but since they're different systems, I'm going to pick a, well, I say I'm going to pick a right away Smith deck, but this does also kind of do its own thing. Um, but this would be my answer to this question. So this is the Chrysalis Tarot. I recently showed this in my spring, oh God, in my spring Tarot TBR that I did. Um, I am weirdly intimidated by this deck for reasons that don't make sense because it's a pack of cards. Um, I really want to buckle down and like actually study this deck, really work with this deck because it does some different things with like the court cards you can see. 
um, this is not the court cards, this is the majors, but it does also do some different things with the court cards. Try and like find one. Where's a court card when you need it? Like here. Um, so I think the court is laid out as like a medieval troop. So the suits are also all renamed. So this is Queen of Spirals is uh, the fire suit. And there are all these like different archetypes in the court. And I find that like intimidating. Um, yeah, this is not an easy like pick it up and read it deck for me. But I haven't really given it much attention to like get to know it as it is. I don't know. Basically, I don't know how much to say because I haven't studied this yet, but it's one that I want to. Um, and it's very springy. Like, ah, oh, these bags. Gorgeous. So hopefully I am planning to actually buckle down with this sooner rather than later. So question six is, I'm sorry, it's another one that I can't give you a straight answer for because apparently I'm incapable of giving a straight answer without about 15 different clarifier statements. Um, but question six is, what is your preferred deck style of artwork and has it changed over time? And I don't think that I have a preferred style at this point. Uh, at one point I would have said like historical style, like the golden tarot, and I still love that. Um, but I think it kind of comes back to the idea of tarot granting multiple perspectives. And so I kind of see each art style as like a different perspective. Um, and I would say that my only real preference is that I just like to look at it and that it's appealing to me, but like that's not even true. So I've spoken about this deck before. This is the Guardian of the Night Tarot. And I love this deck. I get a lot of value out of this deck, but I don't love the art style. I'm gonna try and find one that really depicts what I mean. Like, it's not the art style, like the collage-ness, the digital collage is fine, but it's like, do you see this like texture to a lot of the cards? And like here, like it looks almost like, and I don't think it is, but it, it, it reminds me of a lot of AI art like that kind of I don't know there's just like something about the textures that I just don't love but I still really like this deck so I truly do not have like a preferred art style because although there are plenty of decks that I'm put off by the artwork there are clearly still the occasional decks that I will use and enjoy even when I don't like the artwork so why is half of this deck upside down I'm so confused I have absolutely no idea what I was doing with this deck the last time I read with it. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't have a preferred art style. And I think it was in my, I think it was in my rainbow decks video. I showed off that like two of my favorite, most loved, most used decks of the moment are these. So this is the Terra Volatile and the Trip and Wait. And these have completely different art styles. Oh hey! So it's like a direct comparison of the same card. Like, just very different art styles. And I wouldn't say that I prefer one over the other. So, can't make a decision. <laughs> there is no preferred art style. Which to be fair I think probably has changed over time because I like would have leaned more towards this kind of thing when I was first starting and would have been a bit more opposed to anything more like, like cartoon, it's not cartoony, but like it is highly stylized um, with this like groovy aesthetic. I don't know. So that probably has changed. I'm more open to different styles and I find different art styles valuable just by default of them being different which I think is something that is not something I would have expected when I first started reading. I don't know if that made sense. I'm justifying not making a decision, what else is new? So, so question seven is which question would you never ask the tarot? Um, and there's no like specific question but I don't ask about other people as in like other people's perspective. So like I said I use the tarot for introspection. So I'm not gonna ask like 
how do you, I resolve this situation with X. I'm going to ask like about my side of the problem and like what do you, I think maybe I handled badly or why do I feel hard done by? It's kind of like I can only take responsibility for my side of a situation and that's what I'm going to ask the tarot about. I'm not going to ask about like the other side. Um, this is not intended to be any kind of comment on anybody else's practice um, but I know for myself that if I was tempted to ask like how do I fix X? How do I make so-and-so happy? Or how do I make so-and-so treat me better? Um, if I'm asking those kinds of questions, it's a bit of a displacement activity for me. Uh, it usually means that I don't want to face up to the reality of what I can actually do within a situation. Because I don't believe that the tarot is actually capable of telling my future or telling me how other people feel or like what's going to happen. So if I'm engaging in that kind of questioning, it's because I'm trying to like maintain a bit of a fantasy and I'm either not willing or not ready to face up to what is actually within my realm of personal responsibility. Does that make sense? Um, Because like sometimes the answer is this person is treating me badly and they're not going to change, and sometimes I'm not ready to hear that. Um, so to actually answer the question, what would I never ask the tarot? I would never ask the tarot about something that is not within my control. Basically, I'm not going to ask the tarot about something that is not my business. Does that make sense? And so I've kind of already answered this question, but question eight is, when you read for yourself, what do you look for? What kind of questions do you ask? So... I ask about myself, basically. <laughs> um, I ask about anything, as long as it's about me. Um, that sounds incredibly self-centered, but this is kind of like a self-care, self-knowledge practice, so I think that's okay. Um, I will ask about anything. I'll pull the tarot out for like big questions, big decisions, making plans, like setting goals, and then I'll pull it out to ask about like little mundane things as well. So to be clear, tarot is not some like big grand practice all the time. Like I ask it stupid stuff. I will also ignore it if I think it's giving me a stupid answer. Um, like I'll write it down so I can come back and see if it was right after all. But like to come back to what I said earlier, tarot grants perspective to enrich your own understanding, not to change it completely. Like it's offering a different view, it's not necessarily directing your path, is how I view it. Question nine. After all the things you've learned about the tarot so far, is there something else about tarot you want to study, research, learn? Um, short answer, yes, everything. Um, I've mentioned Marseille and Thoth. I also made a video recently talking about like Oracle, and these are like different systems, but I want to use them to enrich my tarot practice. Um, more specifically, there are also so many systems within the system of tarot uh, that I don't know that much about. Like there's like astrology, numerology, and so on. Um, and so my like not very strict focus at the moment is astrology, especially with the deck and walk. Um, I'm trying to learn a bit more about astrology and the kind of correspondences and how that all interacts with tarot and how it can shape like meanings of cards and therefore my interpretations of those cards it gives me like something else to hook into when I'm doing a reading. I'm also just having a lot of fun with how self-referential the tarot can be. So like how cards are aspects of other cards and how knowing that adds nuance to their meanings. And like, again, it comes back to perspectives. It gives you different perspectives to interpret. So like, for example, all the kings are aspects of the emperor. So when I pull a king, there's a little shadow of the emperor in the back of my mind lending his meaning to that king in that reading and I like thinking about how that can kind of alter what I'm seeing. Um, oh and speaking of kings, the court cards in general. I see the courts as their own suit almost and I find them the hardest to connect with. I want to do some dedicated study to make the court cards like meaningful to me to like really try and dig into what my like personal meanings are for the court cards because I, I think I think a lot of us do. I struggle with the court cards because they're supposed to represent people and then my problem is that I try and take that too literally and I get a bit stumped in a reading when, especially because I'm not reading about other people. So yeah, 
the court cards, astrology, generally just like deepening my understanding of different cards and also everything else eventually, hopefully. Okay, so the final question, question 10. What advice would you give to someone who's just starting to learn tarot? First of all, I don't feel super qualified to give advice because I feel like I know nothing um yeah um but even with everything I've said about the rules and the structure of the tarot and how important I personally think that is and how valuable I think that is personally I think the actual advice I would give to somebody is like even though there's a rigid structure there's rules there's meanings there's like set meanings tarot is also something you make up as you go as in like, yes, there are these set meanings, but they don't mean anything to you until you meet them. And I think that's a really convoluted way of saying um, tarot is a practice and it takes practice. You need to spend time with the cards. You make your own meanings and you're never done learning because you're never done having experiences. Um, yeah. Also, you can always change your mind. Uh, which I think is good advice for life in general. Um, but when it comes to the tarot, you can always change your mind. So like, don't stress about changing your ideas and meanings when the meaning of a card like evolves with you. Um, don't stress about outgrowing a deck. Don't stress about coming back to that deck. Um, yeah, smarter people than me have said that tarot is a mirror to our internal self. And I think we don't we shouldn't expect ourselves to grow in a straight line and so we shouldn't expect our tarot practice to evolve in a straight line either. Yeah, I think that's probably about it. So God knows I could keep talking, but I'm not going to. Um, those are my answers to the how do you tarot tag. I really enjoy these questions. I think they're really interesting. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching and hearing my thoughts. I hope I didn't bore you too much with too many thoughts. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for spending some time with me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.